Good day, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of Shooting the Shit with the Rhino. Today we're going to broach a topic that uh, hasn't been broached all that much, actually, and I'm surprised it hasn't been broached all that much when I, when I, when I sit back and I think about it. And it's contract breweries and retail sales. Now, I did just finish recording a Shooting the Shit with the Rhino where I ch chat talked for almost 20 minutes, so I'm going to try and make this a little shorter, but who knows, I like to talk. I like to talk. I wish somebody was here to talk with me about this stuff. Uh, but, uh, so, contract brewers have some dilemmas. Uh, they technically, in Ontario, cannot, couldn't, I should say, couldn't sell at beer festivals. It was a rule that was never really enforced. Contract brewers always went to beer festivals. Left field, before they became a uh, brick-and-mortar brewery, when they were a contract brewery, they brought up the fact that they couldn't legally serve at a beer festival, which made the AGCO actually have to start enforcing it. To solve this problem, because a beer festival is a great place for a contract brewer to get their name out, since they don't have a brick-and-mortar area for somebody to go to, uh, to solve this problem, the beer store came up, and the beer store was like, Hey, we can help out. We can be the middleman, so they really don't do anything. The way it works is uh, there is a form. So I get my SOP for my beer festival. I get an invoice sent to me by the brewery that is a contract brewery. They send me their invoice. I take that form from the beer store and I fill it out and I put in the stuff from the invoice, I put in my SOP, I put in the date of the festival, and I forward that sheet back to the beer store. Now the beer store takes that sheet, stamps it with their stamp, and sends it back to me. Now the brewery is legally allowed to serve at the, at the festival. There is a $20 charge to the brewery for this, and that's it. So this was free money for the big guy, for the company owned by Amheuser Busch, Molson Coors, and, Sli and Sapporo, it was free money for them. But they were helping out; they were looking good. It does help get contract brewers to a beer festival, so that's great. Uh, other than that, other than a beer festival, a contract brewer only has a few options for for sales. They have licensees, so they have bars and restaurants, and they have the LCBO and the beer store. The LCBO has a limited amount of shelf space, it's hard to get into, and they demand a certain amount of beer, and they can demand it at any time, and you have to get it to them within a certain amount of time, or they can delist you. And in all honesty, a lot of contract brewers can't keep up with that demand, uh, or get that demand at the time it's needed. The beer store anyone can get into. Anyone in the world can sell their beer at the beer store. You just have to have the money to pay them. You're paying them for your SKU, and you're paying them per store for said SKU. So if you have one, if you have two items, and you want to sell it at 20 stores, and you want to sell it in singles and six packs at each one of those stores, you're going to be selling. You're going to be paying them 40 times because you have two brands. You want to sell them at. Well, actually, you'd be paying them 80 times. You have two brands you want to be selling them at 20 stores, and you want to be selling them in two formats. So it's 2 times 20 is 40 times 2. 80. So you're paying them 80 times whatever their fee is. Uh, I believe last time I looked, it was like 5 Gs. So you'd be paying $40,000? Oh, yeah. My math, uh, it's like 6 a.m. My math isn't there. Before I get through an uncle, I get home from work at 3 a.m. Fuck you guys. Um, so, what my basic premise here is, is I really think we should all, all of us that are beer lovers, should get together. The very next amendment the AGCO should make, the very next amendment the AGCO should make, is to allow contract brewers to sell their beer through the retail store of the brewery they are connected with, their partner brewery, the brewery that is brewing their beer. Their beer is being brewed in that in that facility, even though the money for that beer and the taxes for that beer are going to and being paid by somebody else. It should be allowed to be sold out of that store since it was produced on that facility floor. The fact that they have to take it from that brewery and 
store it somewhere else until they can find somebody to sell it doesn't make sense. Sure, take take a, take seventy five percent of it away. Leave a couple two fours there to sell. Uh, give that brewery a ten cent per unit kickback for selling it, and you get the rest. Um, twenty cent per unit kickback. Whatever. You're still making more money this way, and you're building a better brand this way. Now, I know the argument could be made some breweries might not want that there, because some breweries might think that the beer is not up to snuff compared to their stuff. Well, the way contract brewing works, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, the staff at that brewery are the ones brewing the beer for the contract brewer, brewery. A lot of times the contract brewer isn't even brewing their own beer unless they're unless the contract brewery has a brewery with a lot a brewer with a lot of experience or a lot of clout in the industry as their brewer and people trust him and let him brew. A lot of times it's being done by the brewmaster at that brewery. A lot of times even the recipe might not be done properly in that you might go in and you you have your your recipe and you're like my recipe has five induction times for uh different hops and uh, and this and that and they can go you know what we're not doing that you get one or you get two so your recipe changes right there because somebody doesn't want to do what you want to do so already you're at a loss because without a storefront without a brewery for somebody to come and visit the people don't get to know you and know your brand which might make them not as loyal for you then you are also at a drawback because you are not making as much money on your beer because you have to pay somebody to make it, you have to pay them to package it, you have to hold, house it somewhere else. You're also losing out on the fact that, that that you only have so many outlets you can sell it at. So already you have three strikes on you. Three strikes on you right then and there. Let's help these breweries out. Let's help them be better. There is enough contract brewers out there that this actually does matter. A lot of people would be like, why does this matter? Yeah, we have we have over 200 brick-and-mortar breweries, but we also have, what, 30, 40 contract brewers? 60 coming up? Like, contract brewers are everywhere. You just don't realize it. Uh, Wellington contract brews, uh, um, Innocente contract brews, uh, Common Good contract brews, Black Oak Contract Brews, Nickel Brook Contract Brews, uh, Trafalgar used to, I don't know if they still do, um, Brock Street, uh, not Brock Street, sorry, a Broadhead used to, um, Stonehammer did at one point, uh, GLB Contract Brewed, like, there are so many breweries that have contracts through them, that the amount of contract brewers out there is, is immense. Uh, cool Brewing. Cool Brewing makes most of its money through contract brewing. Like, there is a huge demand for space from people that don't have the money to open up a brick-and-mortar brewery. And if they could sell, we might actually see a brick-and-mortar building. Uh, you might actually start seeing more of these people succeed instead of just scraping by and having to fold. Turtle Island folded, uh... Um, uh, Garden Brewers, uh, he was a great brewer, he was a great brewer, uh, Victor North was awesome, He he's brewing at Black Oak now, uh, he was an awesome brewer, he had to fold his brand, because he couldn't make any money at it, and you can't make any money, because you don't have a way to f show people who you are, and you don't have a way to make money other than forcing yourself into licensees. If they could get a revenue stream through a retail store, they would be set. Well, not set, but they'd be so much better off. So let's help. This is the next amendment that should be made. The next amendment that should be made is just that. Allowing a brewery to sell the beer that has been contracted there. They should be allowed to. You, they, they should be allowed to sell any other brewery beer that's brewed in Ontario that they want to sell there. They should be allowed to. They'd have to do almost like a grocery store and figure out what tax money is going to the government and what money has to go back to the other brewery, but they should be allowed to do that. But let's let's take baby steps, because Ontario needs baby steps. Ontario is... The, the nanny state that is Ontario cannot just do a big jump forward. We need baby steps. So the baby step right here that we need to take 
allow a contract brewer to sell their beer at the brewery they contract, that contract brewed their beer. Thank you guys. Bye.